a friend of mine up in Sheffield, a man called, sorry am I shouting too much, <laughs> a man called Mashir al Farah, who some people possibly know, he's a Palestinian man, he's been active in the Palestinian solidarity campaign for a long, long time. There was nine members of Mashir's family were murdered last year. Mashir's sister is a doctor in Gaza. She's also the Vice President of the Red Crescent in Gaza. And she's also the Director of the Middle Eastern Children's Society. And along with them nine family members, there was another ten members that were injured, five of them serious. And it wasn't just the, the Alfaras family who had done these unfortunate consequences. There were other families there. I'm sure a few of you may have heard there was 25 family members on the 20th of July. The family Abu Jawa. 19 of them people were children. Five of them were women. Three pregnant women. And they were celebrating the end of Ramadan. They were having a meal and they were mown down. A whole family. Five days before that massacre. The Israeli Defence Force, they put out a tweet. And you know what the tweet said? It said there was a headline, and it says, Where do the terrorists hold their weapons? And you know there was four pictures under that tweet, and that statement. And the four pictures were houses, schools, hospitals, and mosques. Really what the IDF were saying, there was no safe place for people in Gaza. You were going to be seen as collateral damage if they felt there was any weapons in these hospitals, homes, mosques, schools. And, I, and you look at the narrative that we were given, 513 children were killed out of over 2,000 Palestinians. Contrast that to one, one Israeli child, five Israeli citizens. But we are presented as if this is a war. This wasn't a war, this was a massacre. Now, Dr. Mona has asked us for two things. She said we desperately, desperately need some funds to start Try and rebuilding, not just infrastructure, but lives. But more than that, because she says, what is the point of rebuilding? For two or three or four years later, it's all destroyed again. The one point that she stressed is to try and, as much as possible, create awareness of the situation there. Because it's not going to come from Parliament. It's not going to come from the politicians waking up one day and saying, oh, you know, we must do something. It's going to come from people like ourselves, raising the voice, explaining to people. And that's the reason we've decided to put on this initiative. That Tell us about today and why you're doing this. Well, today's the launch of the big ride. Yeah. Uh, we're hoping to get a thousand cyclists cycling from Edinburgh to London. Yeah do two things. One is to raise money for children's charities operating in Gaza. Uh -huh. You can imagine after the, the terror rained on Gaza by the Israeli army last year, the Israeli Defence Force, that the infrastructure, that people's lives have been shattered. Yep. So one of the things we'll do is to raise money to help try and rebuild those lives. The second thing is a political demonstration. There are a thousand scientists riding through cities of Scotland and England raising the issue of Palestine, yeah. uh, raising solidarity with the Palestinian people. Cool. We're hopefully having some big meetings and, and raising the profile. Well done, well, look, we're, we're getting lost now. In front of us is the rest of the group now. Yeah. We're about to come up to Parliament Square, so we better catch them up again, John. Thanks ever so much. Okay, thanks. Dave. Free, free Palestine! Occupation is a crime! Free, free Palestine!